You're listening to The Business of Glamping and Unique Holiday Rentals. This is where we love to talk about tips, tricks and inspirations for anyone hosting retreats, tree houses, cabins, hideaways, canvas structures, hobbit holes and anything in between. In fact, anything in the hospitality industry that's a bit special and very unique. Today, I'm asking what exactly is glamping or a unique holiday rental and what glamping business models are available for those who are interested in this part of the market. So let's get started. Glamping and unique holiday rentals are surging in popularity with the growing desire of customers to book holidays that deliver an experience. They are also the new business of choice for those wanting to improve their work-life balance. So how do you build a strong business like this that gives you the life you need and a great investment? I'm Sarah Riley and I want to share what I've discovered after being immersed in this industry for over 20 years to inspire you to find out more about what's going on. Welcome, this is the business of glamping and unique holiday rentals. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. I am your host, Sarah Riley, and I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me here on my new podcast, where I'm going to be sharing tips, tricks, inspirations, and all kinds of juicy content to get you really excited about this marketplace. Now, this is actually a very exciting place to be because it's a new industry and it's one which is ripe for early adopters to ride the wave of success that being in a new market can bring. So there's lots of models that can be followed in terms of what types of uh, services and structures and all kinds of other things that can be set up to bring in an income from this type of service. But more importantly, I'd like to share a few things about where others have had extreme success on very little investment capital. So I'm going to talk a bit later about a company who introduced their services back in, I think it was 2009, and they are now a multi-million pound company, but they started on $40,000 just $40,000, which they raised through a collection of uh, small bank loans and um, also using credit cards. And I certainly wouldn't recommend that approach, but it did work for them because they had hardly any money to invest. They had no funds and no land. And yet they have managed to set something up now, which is a multi-million company And I will be talking about that a bit later on. But first, we need to explore what exactly is glamping. Well, this is really interesting because it does mean different things to different people and it's quite subjective. There seems to be clearly three different types of perspectives. So we have the perspective of the owner the manager, the investor, the the person who's actually setting up the business and running the service and has the most gain from their business being successful. So the second perspective is from those who have the most to gain from keeping the standard of the industry high. So this could be the various associations that have come together to help keep some kind of structure and quality regulations within the industry. Uh, We also have organisations and businesses such as the World of Glamping who offer a way of uh, quality checking the different services that are around. But also there are the in-country tourism boards and tourism regulators, such as in the um, UK, we have Visit England, Visit Scotland and so on. And they have a way of monitoring different tourism services that are available. They offer quality checks and star ratings and all other kinds of um, ratings. 
Then the third and final perspective is, of course, the customer, the person who I believe is the most important. It is, of course, all about what they believe glamping is and what they believe a good, unique accommodation service is and what needs to be done to make that better or to tweak it to become something else. Now, we can definitely debate this further in my Glamping Business Facebook group. And I would love you to come and join the party over there. Come and tell us what your thoughts are and what you think makes up a glamping business or a unique holiday rental. And we can chat about it in there and give some experiences and offer some examples. But in the meantime, I'm going to offer a number of elements that I believe together make up that type of service and has turned it into something that we can now experience today. Now, if you're a keen camper like I am, then you've probably seen camping trends come and go over the years, but actually none have been more determined to stick around than glamping. As we all know, the actual word glamping is a blend of glamorous and camping that have been brought together to form a new word which has actually been put into the dictionary, which is now an official word. And it's something that has developed from the fact that many people try camping in their life and often are put off by the lack of facilities, the creepy crawlies, leaky tents, uncomfortable beds and the sheer effort of pitching a tent and going camping. They love the natural side of it. They love being in nature. They love being at the campsite. They love the social side of it. They love the campfire and everything else. But what they don't like is the effort. It's not really much of a holiday. And that's why glamping became very popular. So at the beginning, it was all about camping and glamping and just having something that was camping, but had a little bit more glamour. So it would be bell tents, it would be um, bunting, it would be luxurious uh, rugs and all kinds of things to help make a camping experience that much more comfortable and that much more of a joy and a lot less work for the person involved or the family involved or whatever. But now it is starting to develop into something else, which is much more than just a blend of camping and glamour. Now it is becoming an experience, something that people can take part in and the experience is very uh, immensely and the more unique, the better. There is always a link to nature. That's what makes it glamping. But it is no longer about camping. It could be actually in a wooden structure. It could be a tree house. It could be in a cabin. It could be in a cave. It could be underground in a hobbit hole. Uh, and yet it still can be on, under canvas in a safari tent, in a teepee, uh, in a dome, whatever. The key is that now it is less about camping, but more about the experience and more about how that experience links to nature. So now we are seeing all kinds of different experiences being uh, labelled as glamping. And in each and every single one, you can absolutely say that the common factor is the fact that it is glamorous, it's slightly different, it's very unique, but it's also linked to nature. And that, in my opinion, is what now is becoming glamping. And I have absolutely no doubt that this will continue to change into the future, that we will start to see the definition adjusting and moulding around what the customer wants and how they want it. And at the moment, this is what they're showing us they want. They want experience. They want to be connected to nature, but they do not want to give up the ease of going glamping, the fact they don't have to do very much, the fact that they're able to relax and enjoy their holiday, that they can really use it as an opportunity, a time to reconnect to their family, 
to be off grid if they want to be or to be very much on grid if they want to be so they can still access their gadgets and access their wi-fi and they can still run their business if they need to do that but they can do that whilst they're enjoying some amazing time in luxury in nature in whatever form that takes in a glamping experience So in summary, glamping at the moment is something that is constantly shifting and adjusting. The definition may well be in the dictionary and we may all believe we know what glamping is, but I can guarantee you that it is going to continue to change into the future. And if you're interested in becoming part of this movement, then it's really important that you also understand those shifts. And the key is to look at what the customer wants and look at where the demands are. And if you are focusing on that, then you will be absolutely spot on with everything that you do. And if you are thinking about offering something or building some kind of service, then I always say to anyone, the only limit is your imagination. As long as you have your customer needs in your heart, then the only limit to what you're going to actually offer is your imagination. I have seen some amazing things developed from the smallest of ideas, the smallest diamond of an idea, which has grown into something magnificent. And they exist all over the world. And I encourage you to do your research. A couple of examples that come to mind are Kudva in Cornwall, UK, K-U-D-H-V-A, the Scottish Bothy Project, all kinds of tree houses around the world, of which many of those were highlighted in the Jane Field Lewis book, The Anatomy of Tree Houses, which I project managed for Jane, Kimala in Thailand, the Tree Hotel in Sweden, the Alimia site in Slovenia, and so many others. I will put all of these links in the show notes so you can go and have a look at them all and they are so inspiring but there are many many others to have a look at as well. There now are so many different projects opening up across the world that this clearly has moved from just being a trend to a significant movement and significant set of business models. And that's what I'm going to touch on now. So there are quite a number of different types of models in the glamping industry and the unique rental industry. And I haven't included all of them here, but what I've done is to pick out what I believe are some of the biggest examples of how people are working in this industry. So the models all fit around everything that makes up a glamping service and the different elements of that. So this could be in terms of a business offering something to a business to enable them to deliver a glamping service or a business offering something to a customer to enable them to enjoy a glamping service. And so these are the various different things that I've identified that could either come from resorts or to smaller, more bespoke offerings uh, offered in a more personal way. And they can also be in terms of offering glamping as an option at an event or something else where glamping isn't the priority of that event, but it's just something that is an add-on service that's being offered. So that's where I'm going to start. That's around festival tents and offering festival goers an opportunity to glamp instead of doing what they would normally have traditionally done, which is uh, staying in a traditional camping situation, um, often in the mud and often very uncomfortably and often without much sleep. But now there is the offering of... um, glamping tents at festivals which I would have to say in the UK at least are incredibly expensive but that if you are going to a festival and you have the money to spend you can now stay in these luxurious tents which give you a proper bed 
lots of comfort, lots of facilities to be able to enjoy yourself, such as hot tubs and everything else, which, you know, if you think about it, when you go to festivals, you're lucky to find a toilet that doesn't have a queue about a mile long. So the fact that you might actually have your own hot tub is just astounding. And that's why the prices are so high. So that's one of them. Then you have the mini private festivals that are offering glamping. So this could be a private glamping festival focused around a wedding or a wedding event or some big party, some big special occasion that someone is, a customer is purchasing from a provider. And so that provider comes in and they put all the tents up, all the glamping tents up. They provide much more than just the glamping stay, but they also provide the wedding service, the wedding reception or the celebration event or whatever is involved in in whatever it is they're booking. And that could mean food, music, uh, entertainment of some description and everything else. Then there are businesses that make it their service to actually provide a mini hotel on demand. So this is when there's going to be a a big group of people getting together and have the need for hotel services and hotel stays but within a place where there is no hotel or in a location where they don't actually want to stay in a hotel but they want to enjoy nature and everything else. So this is when that particular business will come in and will set up a, a multitude of offerings that you would normally get in a hotel but it would be temporary, it would be offered in a large field or some kind of large grounds and it would be bit specifically linked to something else that's going on. So this could be some kind of motocross sport or horse shows or races or anything like that. Then there's offering glamping around a specific experience. So this might be an experience for health and wellness. So a health and wellness retreat or a yoga retreat or something similar to that where someone actually is going primarily for the experience and for uh, an outcome. So that could also be some kind of workshop or some kind of learning or education or development around something. So it could even be a business development. And they are offered glamping as a way of being able to stay in that location for a length of time. So the glamping isn't primarily the offering, it isn't the main part of the offering. The actual experience is the main part of the offering and the glamping is there to enhance it. Then moving away from the larger events and the larger offerings, there's also the business model which is set around personal tents and offering those personal tents to families or individuals or traveling couples or whatever to where they have an opportunity to stay in a glamping tent that has been put up by somebody else at a campsite of their choice or at a dedicated campsite. So that person doesn't have to be fussed with carrying any of the utensils, having the kitchen, doing the bed or the bedding or anything else. They don't need to take any of that. They literally turn up. It's all been done for them. It's a very relaxing experience because they get to enjoy glamping in a more affordable way but without any of the effort because someone else has done that for them. This is proving to be very popular with uh, families who really enjoy camping but they've realised that actually the act of camping can be quite stressful when you've got children and you have to take so much stuff that people just can't fit into their cars or whatever it is they're using to get to place to from place to place but those families also recognize that actually the kit they use for camping they only use once or twice a year and it's quite a lot of money to invest in something that you use that infrequently you store in the garage or you store in the shed and 
and then you pull it out once a year and it's got holes in it it's rotted it's gone moldy and so you have to buy new kit even though you've only used it a few times and so this is something that is becoming more appealing to them because they don't have to buy the kit in the first place they don't have to store it they don't have to set it up so it's much more relaxing in terms of having a holiday they get someone else to do it for them and they just go along and enjoy it all so the next model is pretty much the same thing, but rather than pitching tents, this is about towing caravans, tiny homes, and other towable structures that can be taken from place to place where a person who has booked it can go to that place and use that particular facility. So this is for airstreams and tiny homes which have been built to look like homes but they are the, about the size of a large caravan. Um, there, It is also possible to do that with certain sized shepherd's huts so I've seen that happen. But this is usually towed by the business owner and set up by the business owner. And then, of course, it's used by the customer who has decided to have it in a certain place or there are dedicated sites for them to be towed to and so on. And it's something that just means they're having that same experience as before, but it's all happening for them. Then, of course, there's the self-drive glamping options. Now, these are usually... Uh, around camper vans of some description they're usually vintage they're very beautifully uh, restored and put together and these are very amazing things a, a piece of our history that we love we adore we adore the shape of them we adore the name of them obviously VW camper vans are a, an one of those uh, heroes of our past and people just love them and they are a, a much more luxurious existence of camping and a lot of people a lot of customers this is debated by businesses but a lot of customers actually believe this is glamping because it's something they wouldn't normally do they're camping but in much more luxury and they don't actually own it they're hiring it it's all self-drive um, and so for them this is actually the very definition of glamping and so a lot of uh, businesses have actually set up this as an option so they have hundreds of these uh, camper vans uh, stored and they hire them out to people to self-drive them away and to enjoy a unique and different experience doing something they wouldn't normally do. And we mustn't of course forget the whole fact that sometimes offering a service isn't the only way you can have a glamping business. You can also have a glamping business offering a product. So this is offering glamping kit and specialist products which are used for people and businesses whilst glamping or whilst setting up a glamping business. So that might be the actual tents or the structures that people are either buying to set up a glamping uh, business or service or it could also be something that customers want to use themselves and some smaller products could be for example uh, cooking utensils um, some kind of air sofas air couches which were very popular for a while um, it's so tree house hammocks and all other kinds of hanging structures and other things like that but there are also the, the different things that underpin a good glamping business, such as the booking systems, such as website building and anything else that a glamping business might need to be able to offer their glamping service. So these are the different elements that come in and those products or specialist services need to be plugging a big need that exists and offering solutions to problems. And then there are also those services that help to support the services of a glamping business. So this could be around, for example, a uh, caravan, campervan and kit storage, dry storage, storage that is rodent free and that will mean that uh, particular structures, certainly larger structures, will remain mould free and mildew free ready for the next season. 
Now there are glamping sites of many different shapes, sizes and offerings. So you have the huge resorts and everything they offer, but you also have the smaller, more bespoke uh, specialist sites which are offering something that's small, has a very uh, personal service attached to it, maybe is set alongside a home where the owner lives and is offered on a small piece of land with maybe the most amazing uh, views that you wouldn't normally get to because it's not a large site. So you're actually enjoying the things that the family that lives on that land would normally enjoy and wouldn't normally be available to others. And then you have the very bespoke services, which are usually, again, very small. They're offered in smaller sites, smaller glamping sites, and they're bespoke set around a service. So, for example, something that does come to mind is an equine retirement centre. So this is where people who have had horses and love their horses, but the horses are old and they're no longer fit enough to be able to do uh, racing or to do riding in any great amounts. And so they're just put out to pasture where they live out their years with other horses who are also retired in a very lovely location and the owners can come and visit them and say hi but they ultimately are no longer fo focusing their attention on those retired horses the retired horses are just enjoying their life as it exists there and then but those owners need somewhere to stay to uh, hang out when they are actually visiting their beloved horses who are retired so Glamping has been one of those things that has become an option there because it's something that people are able to set up a little bit more easily than maybe building some new buildings uh, with facilities for people to stay. But also it means that the equine retirement owner, uh, facility owner, is able to add that as an income stream to their business. So they're not sending away the people, their customers to hotels nearby, but instead they're inviting them to stay near the horses where they can enjoy 24 hours with their horse. Now, obviously, this is a very niche service and it's something that doesn't always fit with everything, but there are some very interesting niches out there. You just need to get your thinking cap on and see where it might fit with you, what you have, the facilities you have, the experience and skills you have, the business you already have set up and just what you have an interest in. There is also a glamping business model which fits around film sets and photo shoots. Now this is where there are ad hoc, bespoke, events or photo shoots or film sets set up to deal with something that's going on at the time and a glamping offering can be used and offered specifically for this. Now there are obviously different elements involved to this kind of offering. They may be quite location specific so there will be a need of a moving kit quite long distances to deal with where the location of the photo shoot or the film set is going to be but the returns are very large in this particular area however again from experience the insurance costs are also very large so if this is something you're interested in then make sure you do your homework and if you're looking for something a little bit more plug and play then taking on a franchise might be something that suits you. So there are a number of franchises available to people who are interested in setting up some kind of glamping site or glamping offering and all the heavy lifting, all the hard work has been done for you and it's literally a, a case of learning from the experiences of the owner who has set up the franchise. But it is worth mentioning that although you do benefit by gaining from someone's experience, you can lose a little bit of control about what type of facilities you can set up, where you buy your merchandise from, where you buy your canvas structures from and how you implement something, what your branding is. 
But this is also a benefit too, because you are benefiting from the branding of a franchise company that's already been set up and already has some traction in the market. But again, this is down to personalities, whether this is a service that suits you or whether you prefer the creative process of starting something from scratch. And my final business model is about just that. It's about doing exactly what I do, which is offering support, assistance and advice to people who want to set up some kind of glamping business or unique holiday rental. And they want to do it at their own steam, at their own pace, in their own style, using their own creative flair, using their own ideas and what they have in their heart as something that they want to offer. So the type of things offered are mentoring, advice, hand-holding, support, helping with mindset issues, helping with exact specifics around planning, design, exactly what suits an area, about the possibilities, about what's possible for a business, for facilities that are available, for the individual that wants to start it up, a bit of a brainstorming and sanity checking maybe. But most of all, I think it's about having an independent overview of the industry as a whole and knowing what works and what doesn't from the experiences of others so that others can learn from those mistakes and hopefully avoid the pitfalls that can come about when you're starting up new businesses in a relatively new industry. But there are also many other keys to the success of setting up a glamping business, no matter what model you decide to use. And the first and most important is the fact that people, your customers, have demonstrated that they will pay money for what you have to offer. So you're plugging a need that they have, a need that they need fixing, a problem they need fixing. So if they have demonstrated that they will pay money for what you're intending to offer, then that is the first key to success. The second is to know your audience and to know who your customer is inside out and to have a niche and unique idea at something that you can be yourself delivering, that you can inject your personality into it and people will know you from others. In the words of the great Oscar Wilde, be unique, be yourself because everyone else is taken. Then, of course, there's knowing your facts. So work through your business planning. It's so important to do your business planning. And this is something that I do for so many other businesses out there when they haven't thought about it before. It's essential to get the business planning right and to take time over the finances to understand where you're going with your business idea and where it's going to take you. And more importantly, the returns on your investment, the return that you're going to be getting in the future and when you're going to be getting it. Also, very importantly, the minimum amount that you can live on and what your big dreams and aspirations are and if your model can actually deliver those. Then also make sure that you're linking to your passions, linking to something that really floats your boat. You're going to be eating, sleeping, drinking and living your business for years to come. So you need to be passionate about it. You need to want to do it. I wouldn't be doing this now and I certainly wouldn't have been doing it for the years that I've been doing it if I was not passionate about it. I am passionate about helping people and about helping setting up small businesses and big businesses in the industry of unique holiday rentals and glamping businesses. And I wouldn't be doing that and doing it well if I wasn't passionate about it, because then I wouldn't be going out there and getting the information that everyone that I'm supporting needs to be able to make a difference and to be able to get the success that they need. And finally, this is a time to be epic epic, not mediocre. Glamping and unique holiday rentals are all about the uniqueness and the epicness of an experience, of something that the customer is able to experience with you and what you offer. So make sure that you are not going to just be doing meh, 
but you're actually going to be doing something wicked that people are actually going to talk about and discuss and chat with their family and share on social media and help you to promote your business so that it becomes the success that you hope it's going to be. Now, right at the beginning of this podcast, I promised a little case study, a very small glimpse of what's available. So I wanted just to talk about Under Canvas. Now, Under Canvas is a company in America. They were set up by Sarah Dusick and her husband, Jacob. They are a company in America who specialize in offering glamping in national parks across the U.S., So these are parks in Yellowstone, near the Grand Canyon National Park, plus many others. Now they started on a very, very small budget of $40,000, much of that being raised in ways that I certainly wouldn't recommend today. But they now are expecting a revenue of $9 million. They have 60 full-time staff and 150 seasonal employees. So they bootstrapped all of this together at the beginning, but now they believe that they are absolutely on track to raise 100 million in revenue. Now, I met Sarah at the Glamping Summit last April, and I hope to meet her again this month when I go over to California, which I'm very excited for. And we'll be talking about more in a future episode. The thing that's very exciting about their business model is that it's open to everyone. They didn't own any land. They didn't have any facilities. They had a very small budget. And yet they've managed to build it into the successful business that it is today. Hopefully that little success story has given you inspiration about the possibilities that are open for you. So there we have it. I've covered a lot today, talking through what exactly is glamping and what exactly is included in a glamping offering, and then the types of models available to you uh, to give you an idea of what's available out there in terms of a business model and what you could use to shape your own thinking and to come up with your own ideas and to introduce something into the market that hasn't existed until you introduce it. In my next podcast, I'm going to be talking about the 11 signs you can use to measure whether you are heading for glamping business and unique holiday rental success or not. But if you haven't had enough and you want to keep diving into this subject, then I'd love to see you over in my Glamping Business Facebook group. My door is always open for you and I'd love to see you there. And finally, make sure you subscribe and leave a review to this podcast in iTunes. I will be so grateful if you do that. It means other people will find it and we can all hang out together. We're building a community here and when a community grows, it becomes a party and that's just so exciting. See you soon. Mm -hmm.